Mark Friedman is with us. He's the director of labor policy for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uschamber.com, the website. Mark, welcome to our program. Uh, thank you, Tom. Mark, why are businesses and their shills so opposed to democracy in the workplace? I mean, unions are democratic institutions. What's, what's wrong with that? Well, I, I might take some issue with the description of unions as being democratic institutions, but let's focus on the... Uh, the How are they not democratic? They run out of an autocracy like, like many other institutions. They have a leadership that, that decides... That is elected. Members. But let, let, let's focus on your earlier point about the discussion of how employees might become unionized. And, okay. and that's really where I think our objections to the Employee Free Choice Act lie. Uh, we believe that the system that's in place respects both sides' interests, uh, that there's, it, it allows for both sides to have a debate over this issue, and that the idea of usurping that, I, that um, process for the benefit of one side only uh, is really, well, in your phrase, unde undemocratic. So you're suggesting that right now if I work at, in a non-union shop and uh, I walk up to another employee in that non-union shop and I say, you know, I think maybe we ought to have a union. I like the idea of, of having a union here. Here's some literature on the union um, that my employer can't fire me because my understanding was that tens of thousands of people have been fired summarily for doing exactly what I just described. Well, my understanding is that there are... Uh Claims that there, there, there are citations filed, and those um, those those allegations are then played out in a, in a legal process. No, it's it, it is legal for employers to fire employees for for you know, in, in, particularly in so-called right to work states, for trying to form a, a union by and large, and and yet the, no, that, that same employer not, can force. I don't, I don't I don't think that's accurate. That's oh, okay, not, well if it's if it's not, I stand corrected. Um, but nonetheless, the fact of the matter is, it happens. And, well, and I, I think you have to acknowledge that. And, and, and at the same time, that employer, I mean, you've got to... At the same time, I think you have to acknowledge that uh, these things get played out in a legal process, and sometimes the employers are found to have violated the law, and sometimes not. And that this is a, a process that we have in place to protect both sides' interests. The, the, the card check, really, this is the heart of the thing. You guys are claiming that card check is, is not... Uh, is not uh, a secret ballot. I, th that's the essence of your argument. Well, and yet, I, 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 frankly, I don't think either side would would disagree with that proposition. That, I do. That card check is well. That card check is a secret ballot. That's right. You would yeah. you would assert that card check is a secret ballot. That's right. Because when you when you sign that card, it is not available to the public. It is not available to your employer to see. It is only seen by the National Labor Relations Board. The employer can be asked to provide a copy of your signature so that they can compare it. But the employer does not see those things. Well, the, I, I, the union yeah, has I, the right to see them. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think I agree with that proposition either. Well, uh, I, prop I, this is how the law is written. In fact, uh, signature verification can be undertaken by a disinterested third party, like a clergyman or, or a mediator. That's. But but, but even the but, employer or the union can't do that. Okay. Well, let's go back to your your comment about how that signature is gotten. Uh, the process for getting that signature is a wide open public process. The right. employee will be approached by union organizers, maybe fellow employees, but certainly union organizers in the in the mix, and they will be asked for a signature in front of other people. Sure. Uh, and in a lot of cases that we've heard about where this collection of signatures already occurs, because it does occur under the current system for other purposes, um, the people approaching employees for their signature are not shy about expressing their expectation that that employee will sign that card. They will do many things, some of them less savory than others, to get that signature. And that employee may very well say, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I, I'm not, I, I just won't put up a fight. Here's my signature. And the, the, the organizers really How is don't that, Mark, Mark, we're talking to Mark Friedman of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. How is that any different than the employer saying, if you guys unionized, I'm going to shut down this factory and move the jobs to Taiwan? Well, first of all, the, the concept of how that signature is gotten and how that employee's support is gotten is vastly different, vastly, 180 degrees different. Oh, come on. The, the coercion no, wait, wait, involved wait, wait. in saying Let you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose your no, home, you're going to lose finish. your health care, you're going to lose your way of life is a thousand times worse than, than saying you're going you're gonna to lose some peer pressure. 
Come no, on, give me, me a break, my, Mark. Plus, you know, Canada has right now unionization laws that are identical to the Employee Free Choice Act. In Canada, they have card check, and they've always had card check. We had card check in the United States in 1935 with the passage of the Wagner Act up until 1947 with Taft-Hartley. It worked just fine. There was nobody who was saying that they were being coerced. In Canada, I'm not hearing, you know, an, uh, an explosion of people saying, I'm being coerced. Oh, my God, I'm being coerced. But, and they only have a 35% unionization rate. We had a 25 percent unionization rate in the United States before Reagan came into office. It's down to around 7% for, for private corporations now. You know, I, I, your doom and gloom scenario, I'm sorry, just historically has not played out in other countries that have this or when we had it before Taft-Hartley. Are you done? I am. All right. Now, may I respond? You certainly may. In full sentences? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Now, going back to my original point that how that employee signature has gotten is is signature here. It's, it's the key point. Yep. In an election, that employee has an opportunity to choose one side or the other in a private matter. Now, they may, they may agree with the employer's description or they may agree with the union's description, but no one's going to know how they vote. Now, moving on to the Canada discussion, if you'll follow your Canada law, you'll notice that uh, many of their provinces have now retreated from the position of mandating or uh, recognition under a car check scheme that would be the same as the Employee Free Choice Act. Well, no, they're but what they're moving, doing is... They're actually moving in the other direction. What they're doing is they're allowing, and the Employee Free Choice Act, by the way, doesn't make it only card check. It also allows the current system, what we have right now. We'll discuss um, and, that in a moment. And, the, and they're adding that. Well, here's here's another another no, argument no, for no, this. That's a, that's a key point, Tom, and I want to make sure that people understand what this bill does and doesn't do. Because there's obviously been a lot of discussion about it, and I think in a lot of cases that discussion hasn't been a full airing of, of the discussion of, of the bill. The bill does not change the current law. I will give you that much. But here's the reality. If, it, if, if the bill is passed, and, it's, and it will, and under the current language, it would require an employer to recognize the union if 51% of the employees are, are sign the cards. Right then the union organizers who control that process, and let's be clear here, the union organizers who control the process, not the employees organically, the union organizers will never go for an election, and they, and they will never go into an employer with the mere 30% that they need to get the election. In fact, the reality is that unions understand right now they have to show up with at least 65 or 75% of the employees signing cards before they'll go for the election, because they know they're going to lose that many to... to, to right, because to the employer is going to bro, so bring so in union really busters. Reduces, and, this reduces the number of employees they have to get no, it's from because 65 they, to 75 percent down to 51 percent. Exactly, exactly, because because they have to come in with an overwhelming majority because they know as soon as the company knows that there's a union for me, all hell is going to break loose. They're going to bring in these this, this, this $2 billion um, a year industry. They're going to bring in these professional union terrorizers, and they're going, to, they're going to force people to sit through slideshows and films and videos and scare the absolute hell out of them. And, and a lot of those people are going to say, okay, I give up. I don't want a union. Uh, even though it's maybe the best thing for me. Um, maybe Mark, it's not Mark, the best thing for them. Maybe it's not the best thing for them. And the fact is... Well, the then they can check, always decertify the, the fact is, The fact is the card check scheme will only capture those employees who say they want the union or are too tired to, of being harassed to resist. It will not capture employees who do not want the union. And that's why it should never be confused for voting. Well, I, I, actually, I don't think it is voting. I think it's registration. And I'd you like just to call get, the secret ballot. You I'd, I'd like to get ballot. to that point. We've got to take a break, though. Can you stick around, Mark? Yes, I'll stay here. Okay, thank you. We're talking with Mark Friedman. He's the Director of Labor Policy for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Their website is uschamber.com, and you can, you can read a whole lot of information over there about uh, the, 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 the whole breadth and depth of their perspective on this. And uh, we're talking about the Employee Free Choice Act, which I guarantee you is going to be front and center. It's going to be probably the hottest thing that's going to happen once Barack Obama becomes president. 16 minutes past the hour.